Amnesia Collection was re-released for the Nintendo Switch this past September, just before the Halloween season. While already available for the PlayStation and Xbox services for the past year or two, I'll give my thoughts on if Amnesia is still worth checking out going into 2020. This was my first experience with the original Amnesia, The Dark Descent, released almost a decade ago, along with the two other games in the collection, Justine and A Machine for Pigs. Each offers an immersive experience that is different from what survival horror games offer today. I can see why this game has a reputation of being one of the best horror games ever released. With that said, I can see this not being for everyone. There's no combat, and while there are enemies, your only option is to run away if you are spotted. At the same time, the game's focus isn't stealth, as you feel more like an actual person waking up in an unknown location stumbling around in the dark. It's in the same style as Gone Home, using a first person perspective, a game which I really enjoyed. Similar to Gone Home, what I enjoyed most about Amnesia was exploring the environments, searching drawers, and reading the backstory in the form of journal pages. If that sounds boring to you, then this is a game you should probably skip. Each game in the collection offers different experiences while focusing on the mystery of your character and the disturbing themes at its core. And yes, they all involve a character waking up with Amnesia and slowly putting together the pieces of their memory as the story plays out. The first game in the collection, The Dark Descent, developed and published by Frictional Games, exceeds that providing puzzles that have you scratching your head and gives you a sense of accomplishment after you realize how to solve them. While there is a hint system that keeps track of things you need to do, the way you need to solve them is completely up to you to figure out. Similar to classic Resident Evil or Metroidvania games, you will often be backtracking to previous areas looking for a specific item needed to solve a puzzle in order to progress to the next area. This game also includes alternate endings, one of which I don't see how people figured out without online help. The environments, locations, and backstory you discover as you progress through your journey are genuinely disturbing. On the other hand, the monsters, the shaking of the environments, and the mysterious gas or wind that seems to be omnipresent does lose its charm after a first couple of occurrences. There is no penalty for death, and while it can be tense running away from a monster you know is right behind you, after dying you reappear near the same location with the enemy no longer in sight. This trivializes these encounters as I didn't feel the monsters could be lurking around the next corner, and as a result I ended up sprinting from one place to another. Now, shifting gears to the next game in the collection, Justine is a shorter experience intended to be just an expansion to the original. In it, a Saw-like scenario plays out that has you go through a series of trials to save yourself and a couple of fellow captives along the way. While mainly a separate experience from The Dark Descent, it is connected to the time period and the characters of the first game. You can beat this game in about 10 minutes if you run through the entire thing, but completing all the optional puzzles and the fact that you have to restart from the very beginning if you are killed made for a much longer experience, but still not as as long as the other two games. The last game in the collection, A Machine for Pigs, which feels like a more refined sequel to the original, has you exploring a vast underground mechanical labyrinth underneath the city of London. The production of this game was handed to a new studio, The Chinese Room, with Frictional Games still acting as publisher. With a noticeable upgrade in the quality of graphics, sound, and music, many of the tedious mechanics from the first game, such as the fuel for the lantern, the sanity and health meters, and tinder boxes for lighting the various candles have been removed. At the same time, many of the puzzle aspects and being able to pick up almost everything from the first game has also been taken out. While I thought that the story, enemies, and the locations were much better in A Machine for Pigs, it did feel too easy and much more linear than the previous two games. Overall, I enjoyed all three games, and having them all in one collection on the Switch made it very convenient. All three games took about 17 hours to complete, which is fair for a game priced at $30. The game plays well on the Switch in both handheld and docked mode. There weren't any issues with controls or bugs since it's been released so many times over the years. The game definitely has a lower budget indie feel, but the dark atmosphere and disturbing imagery definitely make this game feel more frightening than most AAA horror games released today. Let me know what other horror or survival suspense games are your favorite. Thanks as always for your support and check back soon for more reviews.